Thanks for joining us on FinPod and our latest edition of What's New at CFI, where we bring you insights from our latest courses and behind the scenes conversations with subject matter experts. Get ahead and stay ahead with the latest from CFI. Hello, and welcome to this latest episode of What's New at CFI. My name's Ryan Spenderlo, and I'm SVP of Training and Curriculum here at CFI. Today, I'm joined by my colleague, Sebastian Taylor, to talk about a new course, Workflow Best Practice for Analysts. Hi, Seb. How are you doing today? Very good, thanks. Thanks for having me. No, I'm really excited uh, that you could join us today in this latest podcast, and I'm really keen to ask you, the, the title of the course sounds really, really interesting. Can you tell us a bit about what you cover in the course? Yeah, of course. The, the course is really a collection of tips and tricks that our all of our subject matter experts across the various uh, pillars at CFI consider best practice. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the courses that we teach are teaching you technical skills or how to do something. And I suppose we, we often or a subject that, that's rarely taught is how you actually work as a team with your colleagues, how you go about saving files and naming conventions and formatting of things and things that really help you be a more efficient analyst that helps with the clarity of your outputs and help you work more efficiently with your team. So that's what we thought we'd bring together in this course is all of those tips that you you kind of learn throughout a long career, um, but no one really ever talks about or, or teaches you. Wow, that sounds incredible. Sounds really, really valuable. Something that we do every day, but perhaps we don't put a lot of thought and time and effort into really thinking <laughs> about it. So you kind of alluded to the fact already, but let me just ask you straight out. Why did the team at CFI decide that this is such an important topic when we've got so many other ideas for courses that we could have been working on instead? Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose the subject come up, came up because we were talking about, um, obviously, this big boom in AI tools. And and really, the, the, one of the big purposes behind using these tools is about being more efficient and, and working faster. And Yes, absolutely, those tools are important, and we've started developing a lot of content um, to explore those in more detail. But what came up in that discussion about being more efficient is actually to enable you to work with AI tools um, and even data science and business intelligence. It really helps to have everything that you do from files to formatting to documents, everything that you do, if that is hyper-organized, it really helps these tools to interpret the files and, uh, and information that's stored within them. Um, and the reason it helps them is because um, everything is in a consistent format. That consistent format though, doesn't just help AI tools, it helps you to work with colleagues. It helps you avoid confusion and ensure clarity in communication. It shows that everyone knows where to find the right versions of files um, and helps people to to look through audit trails to see what changes were made to documents. And all of these things, including those AI tools, can help you and your team be more efficient. That sounds really, really interesting. Um, so apart from being maybe more efficient, are there any other mm -hmm. kind of tangible benefits that our learners who complete this course will gain? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yes, being organized saves you time. The other huge benefit I can think of is that you actually reduce manual errors significantly. One of the examples I talk about um, during the course, actually, in a, in a conversation with another one of our SMEs, is that um, errors in models cost dollars, really. They, they cause errors, and they ultimately will cost you money, um, mm -hmm. directly or indirectly. And, and the example I talk through is, when I joined um, one of my first jobs early in my career, we used to use this Excel model to dictate um, what forward contracts we would buy in of gas and electricity. And there were so many problems caused by inconsistencies in these models that every week we'd be reporting back to our risk management team about a tr um, excessive trades that we'd done or perhaps trades that we should have done the prior week. Um, and each time we did this, there would be a cost impact, a significant cost impact to the business. Um, and so understanding how to um, 
make your models better structured, more efficient, better naming conventions, um, and allowing you to work more consistently with your team is not only going to save you time, but it's going to reduce the errors in, in your work. Wow. That, that's, oh, that sounds incredibly, incredibly valuable. And I guess it's a really good way for analysts, regardless of what specific field you're in, to maybe stand out a little bit and highlight themselves uh, apart from their teammates as to how efficient they, they are. Because I guess this isn't, something, this isn't something that a lot of people really think about on a day-to-day -day basis. No, exactly. And um, actually, during the course, I will have a conversation with um, Jeff, one of our subject matter experts. Um, and one of the points he brings up is that although these things are best practice, it's actually surprising how rarely they are done. And so there's a huge opportunity there for analysts to be the ones to step up and, and kind of put these best practices in place. Because when you come across an analyst that does these things, it's so obvious how much um, thought they have put into the best practice of their model. Like you can see it instantly how well organized something in, uh, how well organized something is, and it immediately sort of instills trust that everything has been checked in the model. You know there's a, a good audit trail that the that the calculations are going to be clear, um, and. Yeah, I, th I think there's a, a huge opportunity for people to to put those best practices in, in place and stand out, like you say. Brilliant. Awesome. Really excited about the course. So I've got one last question for you, Seb. Is there anything that you're really excited about that you do in this course that might be a bit different to maybe other CFI courses? Yeah, well, we're always trying to think of new ways to present uh, information and new ways to teach. And one of the new things that we tried in this particular course was instead of just having one subject matter expert present all of the content, we thought it'd be interesting to, at the end of each chapter, bring in one or two other subject matter experts and actually have a bit of a discussion about our real world experience of the topics covered in that, uh, in that chapter. So, um, yeah, I think that that really helps bring those concepts to life. And uh, in the course, uh, learners will hear the subject matter experts talk through their experiences and, and really how this stuff um, has a, a real tangible impact to their work. Brilliant. Oh, that sounds, I'm sure something that our learners will be really super interested in, in having a look at. So, so Seb, thank you ever so much for taking time out of your very busy day uh, to talk to us about our new course, Workflow Best Practice for Analysts. Um, hopefully, um, we've got some more courses from you that we will be uh, releasing at some stage in the near future, and you'll come back on the podcast and tell us about those. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Awesome. All right, everybody. Um, thanks ever so much for taking time out of your day to have a listen to our latest podcast, What's New at CFI. Hopefully, we'll see you on a future podcast very soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. FinPod is brought to you by Corporate Finance Institute, the number one rated online provider of finance and banking training, certifications, and productivity tools.